In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all God's people say, Amen. Father, as we continue to go through this beautiful prayer of Shalom, the Jedediah, the Beloved, the, the Man of Peace, help us to understand the, the text and how to pray in the power of the Spirit. Because if we're going to be prayers, we've got to pass through the what? The sacrifice. When we pass through the sacrifice, we have been redeemed sons and daughters. So we're passing through the sacrifice and give you glory and honor. Amen and amen. amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Brother Peter, what verse we on? 27, First 28. First Kings 8? 28. 28. 28. We're going through the longest prayer in the Bible. The longest prayer in the Bible. Now, of course, when we read the Bible, everything is so compact. Now, next week is very important because you're going to have maps on the second temple. And we're going to do some comparison. So when we have your final, that'll be um, that'll be a question on your on your final. I'm going to give you two pictures of the first temple and the second temple, and you have to fill all these things in without looking. <laughs> Everything will be blank, and then you have to do your essay question on the difference between the first temple and the second temple. And the the second part is what what parts did Jesus cover? You got your test, brother Peter? No. All right, I wouldn't want to be you grading it now. <laughs> Verse 27. Now, the prayer of dedication, Sister Celeste, what is the what happens with the prayer of dedication? You look up to the heavens. All right now, there's two there's two incredible months that it starts. Now, when's the first time that the temple was built? Sister Celeste, how do you say temple? The Hekel. Very good. Thank you, Sister 962. Celeste. 962. Right now, when it, when the temple started, it was what month? April. April. May. So, when was it kind of uh, really coming into its own around Pentecost? Does this right. sound interesting? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Birth of Christ. That's Jesus' what? birthday. What? Birth of Christ. What? Didn't you say Pentecost? Pentecost. Oh, the, uh, the birth of Christ there. Christ. I, I'm, I'm thinking of reference. You're telling me you're explaining Pentecost. I went. Birth of Christ. All right. Pentecost, okay? Mm -hmm. So, now, what happened again, just for your review, is. This is the time period when David had all the sheep down by the Dead Sea. And this is the time period they would be led through Jerusalem heading toward Bethlehem. So when you have that all the sheep were out in the field mm -hmm. on the Christmas story, this is what would be happening. Mm -hmm. and, and you know that when a sheep was prepared for, for all done for the, uh, in the second temple period, they would wrap the sheep in swaddling clothes. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Sister Marie, are you getting this? Yeah. <laughs> now, this is, this is the time when they, they begin beginning. Now watch this. This is good stuff. Now, th the time when they begin to conclude with it, um, which is how many years it did it take, Brother Peter? Thirteen. Thirteen. Seven and a half oh, years. Seven. Okay. They left it dormant for 13 yeah, years. Okay. So um, that, that's kind of strange. Yeah. We don't really know the reason yet. I'll, I'll try to dig into that for us. Okay. Because this is the ultimate Bible study. And so over here, then we have October when it was completed seven and a half years later. And this would be what feast? Oh, 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 oh. The other one. This would be the Sukkot. That's it, the Sukkot. Right. Which is the, 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 the tents, right? Remember that? Yeah. Yep. Now, during this time, www.com, this is the explosion in the month of who had, who had a, uh, an angelic visitation at that month? Mary. 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 Uh, I'm thinking of Zachariah and Elisheva. Right. Right. Yes. They had that visitation during the month. Right. Number two. This is when Jesus got baptized. This is, this is the month when Jesus started his uh, preaching. Okay, you got that? How many years? Three and a half years. Okay, you got that? Now, when we, when we go www dot, we just saw the cloud coming on the inside. Miss Pat, where is the cloud coming on the inside? Temple. In the... Temple. Oh, in the t in the temple. Yes, where? What part? In, in the day oh, there. The Try again, Pat. The middle. In oh, the yeah. hekel. Oh. All right. So www. Then we have this this section. Now this is a long explanation. Do you like all you like all this background, ma'am? Yes. And this is called the dedication. What do they What do they celebrate around dedications years later? Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Right. Oh. 
But this is years oh, later. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Pat, go. Mm -hmm. All right, Hanukkah, years later. And uh, so every time there was something really big happening, this would be around December. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, when you look at when you look at your um, understanding, and, and next ne next week or the upcoming weeks, we're going to go into the Jewish uh, months and everything else to show you. So, very interesting background again. Then we're going to go through all the doors. Mm. Sister Marie. And the Sukkot is when Jesus had the transfiguration. That's right. Oh yeah, this this would be the month of the transfiguration right there too. Mm, right. Very good. This would be uh, this would be Yom Kippur finishing up, and they would walk through the desert. So we can see even when the temple was put together, we can see a lot of uh, Jewish background flowing through. Wow. So now we're coming to the prayer of dedication. Okay, Sister Marie. No, go ahead. All right, let's everybody with me. Yes. Then he says to us. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in front of the whole assembly of Israel, spread out his hands. Now everybody underline that he spread out his hands. That's how they what. Prayed. Prayed. That's how they prayed. Okay, so prayed. now when you go back to First Kings three, they prayed like this. And by the way, I told you they blessed like this. this first how many ever went to church? Three. Did you go to church, Amen? First, first Kings three. Did eight. you see anybody doing that? Eight. First eight. Kings eight. eight. Yeah. What he just said was yes. verse twenty. And so they prayed like this. That's why 22. Paul says in First Timothy two, 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 verse one and two, when you pray, pray with hands held aloft. Right. So what is Paul doing? Ready? Now, this is really good. Turn to the person next to me. This is really good. Yes. Yes. Really good. Really good. Now, really did you go to that concert on Thursday, ma'am? Yes. Did you go, ma'am? Did you go? Now, yes. did you do this at least once? Yes. What were you doing? You were praying in temple service. <laughs> you were praying in temple adoration. And, and this is how you did it. Was that beautiful or what? And then, now watch this. It becomes, when you pray like that, it means, I am available for service unto the Lord. It also means I'm telling the truth, palms up. Yes, yes, but I am available for service. Because Paul would say in Romans 15, I am a minister of the Lord. So, when you, when you read this, you can read in 1 Kings 3, prior to when he, he gets the vision. And then after that, we have the, the babies, and we show you the hall that it was in, right? Everybody see the hall? Good stuff, Sister Irma? Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff? Yes. Sister Marie? No. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Then he, he spread out his hands toward heaven. All right, so everybody, everybody stretch out your hands toward heaven to see what he did. 22. 22. 22. Lord God of Israel, there is none like you. Remember we did that? Yes. And, it w and we drew a connection there between that and what? The birth of the birth of Isaac, right. Genesis 18. Right. Remember that? Right. Who could what? Continue, remember you saw the connection? Right. Like you in heaven or above or earth below, you who keep covenant of love with your servants who continue wholeheartedly in your way, you have kept your promise to your servant David, my father. With your mouth you have promised and with your hand you have fulfilled it. Now, if you circle the word mouth, the word mouth, Sister Marie, is what in Hebrew? Pay. Pay. P-E-H. -E now, when God speaks something, it has to come true. Okay, everybody see that? So, what, what I do in my prayer life, in prayer, you have to hold God to His promises. I remind, not that He needs, He doesn't forget, He doesn't forget, but I said, Lord, you said... How many ever said that to God? Mm -hmm. So it's a reminder, not so much that that He forgot that you what you remember the promises, and your faith is built up every time you hear one of His promises. Moses does that, but the other thing too, Father, don't forget it's timing. Lord, you said, look how long it took for Abraham's wife to have a baby. That's right. So yeah, Lord, you said, but it's in His timing. That's right. Then he says there, uh, this is all review, and with your hand you have fulfilled it. Now, where, where's his hands? What direction are they? Now, what, do you, what does he say? With your hand. So what is he seeing? He's seeing the right hand coming down. That's right. 
Now, let me show you something. You're the only one on your block that knows this, Sister Celeste. In John chapter 10, let me show you something. You ready for your connection? You ready to march around the room, Sister Celeste with Murray? <laughs> She's going to limp and I'm going to limp. All right, now, look with me in John, John 10. 10. Hold okay. your spot. This is really good, isn't John. it? You like Shalomo's prayer? Mm. Very much. I right, go to John 10. Who wrote John? John. John. You're very smart. <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke, okay. John. 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 This is this is some really good stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I think background is the best, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you get the background, boy, can you, we can yeah. understand the best. John 10. You with me, in John 10. Mm -hmm. yes. Go all the way down to. Okay, if you look at verse 12, you can see the hired hand, but that's the one I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on. See the hands there? Yes? No. no. John 10, 12. 12. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when it, he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Right. Then the whole wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep knows me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them up also. They will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life and only to take it a cup. No one takes it from me but I lay it down. I have authority to lay it down and have authority to take it up again. This is the command of the Father. So where, where, is, every, where is everything we do is where? In his what? In his hand. In his hand. And also the hired hand is of the world, but God's hand is miraculous. Now here's what I want to show you. Go to verse 29. John 10, 29. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. That's the hand I want to show you. So what is Solomon seeing? Now, what does it mean to do this? Toward heaven. You got it? You got to put your hands toward heaven. That's how they pray. Interesting, isn't it? Yes. And what's happening inside the chakel, the cloud, it's no longer on the top, it's inside. on the inside. How many sheep did they, uh, sheep, uh, sheep and sheep and sheep. How many sheep did they kill? Uh, 220, 220, quarter of a million almost. Yeah. A lot of sheep's blood. And so what happens now, then here's the declaration of Jesus, they're in the Father's hands. Now connect this because he's the temple. Where does Jesus say he's the temple? John chapter 2. Remember when you learn, when you learn a fact about Jesus, you can't forget it for future Bible studies. Mm -hmm. So guess what, he's, here's the Father's hand, you're in the Father's hand and no one can do what? Take Snatch them out. them out. So. If you're going to pray, what, what point are we on now? Number six. If you're going to pray. No, that's five. Oh, number five. Point number five about praying. When you're praying, then you can't be snatched out of the Father's hand. Right. Amen. Sister Marie. That's awesome. It is awesome. Sister. Uh, Sister Robert, and isn't he comparing the hired hand, which is. I, I brought the hired hand in to show you that those hands are... And that's the world. Yes, that's but the But his hand, we're safe in. The world's hand, you're not safe That's right. That's what I was wondering. This is right. Well, you know God's name, yod heh vav I don't want to that. The yod heh vav hey. Sister Marie is ready to march around with Rita. Rita, you ready to march with Sister Marie? That, that is <laughs> very, <laughs> that's very powerful. You ready for that? I just want to show you the hand. All right, so I won't say I just say want to show you, 1029, you're in the hand. Everybody got that? All right. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Father Bill, tell them. Uh, Sister Marie needs to take a sabbatical soon. <laughs> All right. Back with me to First Kings. And uh, this is where some of you, you didn't hear what I said last week. Verse 25. Now, Lord, the God of Israel, keep for your servant David, my father, the promises you made to him when you said, you shall never fail to have a successor to sit before me on the throne of Israel. Okay? Now, this is what I said. And some of you say, go slow. Someone say, go slow. 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 This is just... Go slow. Go slow. This is just review, sister. 
in Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. Is that slow enough? Yes. All right. Gabriel makes his presence known. This is the, just for your information, it is the most repeated gospel in the church year. Wow. It's, it's done seven times. <coughs> Sister Marie's going off on numbers already. It's done seven times. So you got that? So if, you go to, if you're a daily master, you hear it seven times. Sister Marie. Wow. Now, du during the... <laughs> Gabriel does something interesting. Gabriel takes... The vision to Mary, and what he does is he takes 2 Samuel 7, 14, and he combines it, and here again in 1 Kings 8, and then he says, there's coming a throne of this child going to be born. And there's a lot of people that tried to sit on it for a few times, and they all died. Now there's coming a time when someone will sit on the throne and he'll sit on the throne forever and ever. So your ulam, Sister Marie, turns into your what? Olam. Right. And olam is the Hebrew word forever. So I said if you look at Gabriel's words to the Virgin Mary, He's taking scripture and he's talking about a throne. So this is called the Davidic throne. Now if you were to look at your maps I gave you again today, you can see here's Solomon's temple. And please note that on the right hand side, on the very, on this side, everybody see on this side? That's at the right over there. On the right hand side there, that would be Mount Moriah. Now, everybody write in there, so you get this down, the Abrahamic covenant. From Abraham. Remember he was right. going to was kill... Was now, where did he kill... Well, he's going to kill um, Isaac, where the second temple is built, where the people of Islam have that dome monstrosity on the top, and they have the rock on there. They believe that was the spot where Abraham was going. They also believe Mohammed ascended to heaven there. I don't believe that. And also, too, on that spot, and I've been in there. They don't allow us in there now because of terrorism. I was in there twice. And then the second thing is that underneath there, the gates of hell will not prevail. That's where hell is. The beginning of hell is right underneath that rock. So now when you, when you hear Jesus saying that to Peter, Matthew 16, 16, you can get all that. And, but you've got to, when he's preaching that, you've got to instantly go all the way back to Jerusalem. Okay? Wow. So now, oh, and, and here's my point. I didn't get my point after all that explanation. The Abrahamic covenant right here has to yield now to the Davidic covenant. Abraham? David. Now, do a little triangle. Abraham. David. The temple is what? Built. And you go straight up, right behind the T in the temple. See the T in the temple? Mm -hmm. Go right behind there and put up, up a little distance. That's Calvary. Where? Right, Calvary. See the T in temple? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, go straight up from the T. Right. And there's Calvary. So wow. actually, oh yeah, right. The Abrahamic covenant so, so, yields to David, yes. and David yields to Jesus. You got it. Amen. Now watch this, because Abraham, David, Jesus. Jesus. Wow. wow. Abraham. Mm -hmm. That's how they show the right. David. Abraham. David. 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 Jesus. Yes. That's the trend. That's how they, dis they distinguish. But the I never seen that before until wow. doing this study. 
So I never read about it, never heard about it. So this is not awful. Yes. Wow. Sister, are you learning anything? Wow. It is wow. Mm. I'll stop to see if you got it. Are you soaking it in yet? Wow. Yes. All right, we're ready to move along. This is still pretty good. Father Bill? Yes, Brother Peter. Who is the Abrahamic cop coming again? The Abrahamic covenant What's was that God will supply the lamb. Yeah, remember he was going to kill his son? His son. Genesis yes. 22, verse 14 and 15. And God did another thing in Genesis 22, 14 and 15. He did something for the first time. He swore. An oath. How do you say oath, Sister Marie? Sheva. S-H-E-V-A. Right. So this is the first time God, and God, if God didn't keep his oath, he would cease to be God. Sheva. Interesting, isn't it? And it's the circumcision too, right? Father? Right. How many know we're, we're really doing Bible study tonight? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's also the sacrifice, the Abrahamic. Yes. Right. The There's sacrifice. Mm -hmm. and now watch this, sisters. Let's, good point. You're getting an A for tonight's class. I'll let your note, mother a note. Abraham sacrifice. Right. Right. Where was the dress rehearsal? The dress, now look at your maps. The dress was rehearsal of Calvary was right before Calvary. Do you see the location? Mm, yes. Yeah. Now, make a right and go into the temple. What? How many times were they sacrificing every day? 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. That's the time Jesus was crucified. You, that's the time. That's the time period. Very good. You got it. Between 9 and 3. Hello. And who mentions that? Mark. Very good. Mark 14. And so you, you could see, you, and didn't we do that with Gethsemane? Sister Pat? No, I'm good. Everybody doing all the connections now? We're not getting far, but you've you got to get all the connections, right? Mm -hmm. So we have Mariah. Everybody see Mariah? Yes. Mm -hmm. Everybody see the temple? Mm -hmm. One sacrifice that didn't take off. All the sacrifices <coughs> did take off. So one sacrifice, all the sacrifice points straight up. To Jesus. No more sacrifices after right. Jesus. Yes. You got it? Yes. Sister Ray, you got it? How many sheep did they do that? Um, they did about 300,000. Wow, God bless you. Yes, ma'am. When you said no more sacrifices after <coughs> Jesus. Well, after after Jesus, Jesus, right. Yeah. Um, does that mean uh, after everything was like with the earthquake yes. and the curtain, yes. ripped, and yes. everything. Now, I want you to know, right behind here is Calvary. Yeah. Now, I want you to, if you go dot, 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 over here would be the second temple, and Jesus saw the curtain <coughs> splitting when he said, it is finished. So he had that vision. He had, he, because he was high enough, and he looked straight in, and he saw the temple curtain go, that's 45 feet high. So and the door, remember inside. outside there was a door, it shook and boom, and down came the curtain. It was that little curtain that Melchizedek put up for us. It was a huge, humongous curtain. That was a big mistake on his part. It was. He, didn't ask me, he did not ask me to help him Don't out. you see how the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were sacrificed right there? Absolutely. Number, uh, 45 reduces to what? Nine. Larry. <laughs> That's all three of them. Larry. Give me a break. Larry. That's Where awesome. are you, Larry? Mm. <laughs> Larry is there. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, everybody understand verse 25, verse 26. And now, the God of Israel, let your word that you promised your servant. Now, we brought the promise in the hand in today, right? That come true. But God will, but will God dwell on earth, the heavens, even the highest, underline verse 26. Here it is again. Who can contain you? Well, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing, nothing is too difficult for thee. You got that? I love that verse. Do you love that verse too? Amen. Nothing. Everybody see that? First Kings eight twenty seven. Now, when you go to prayer, say you have pre problem. Say you have. Uh, you just say this. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Amen. Nothing. Nothing. Absolute. Now, so number six. When you're in prayer, you 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 got to live in the impossibilities. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Amen. Right. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing is too difficult for thee. Amen. 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 Sister Marie. Absolutely. Now, let's go back to this for a moment. I told you 
something interesting about this, a Bible study about 100 years ago. When Gabriel picks up these Bible messages to Mary, right? You got that? When he picks up those, he says there, and Mary says, uh, with God nothing is impossible. impossible. The Greek doesn't say that. And we quote, we quote something that the Bible doesn't say in the Greek, incorrectly. Here's what it says. Because of God living in uh, the possibilities of God are all the time. Amen. Which is a much better interpretation. That's what the Greek says. Does that sound good? Yeah. Because of God. Here's what the Greek says. Because of God living, all the possibilities are present to you. What are we translating? Nothing is impossible. So every time I hear that now I go... Mm. But everybody quotes it, because that's the only Bible verse we know in the whole thing. All possibilities are... Because of God, all possibilities are available. Sister, Sister uh, uh, Mary, what do you think of that? I, I think it's awesome, but he's talking this about... Is, the, now watch he's this. he's talking about the hand of God coming yes, to earth. Yes, yes. Now this is what hello, Gabriel... Hello. This is what Gabriel said to Mary. And because of Mary... Hello. Mary says, All right, that's it. Mary says, because of God, <laughs> I live in possibilities, all the possibilities. Yeah. Oh, Just for a second, please. Larry. No, seriously. <laughs> All right, now, the, the, this is the Yud, the He, the Vav, and the He. All right? Now, that's, our, that's what we used to say, Yahweh, Y-H-W-H. Okay, so here Solomon is talking about the hand of God. That's the one in heaven, okay? And what he's saying, nothing's impossible because he's coming to earth. Here it is. And there's where Gabriel speaks to Mary. That's Mary, okay? The Vav in God's name is the Blessed Mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, because of her, yes, he came down to earth. That's what the Jewish rabbi told me. Oh. That was the greatest teaching I ever heard. Yes. Yes. That's awesome. Isn't that awesome? Yes. yes. Amen. Did you like that? my mind. Yes. He just did it. He just said it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that was so good. Amen. Now, do, do you see what's happening with Gabriel That's and Mary now? That's awesome. Yes. So, they're taking the prayer and he's giving Mary scripture and then Mary responds to the prayer. Because of God, every, there are all these possibilities. Everything is all the possibilities. Even for you, Brother Peter. And so it, the Bible doesn't say in Greek, it doesn't say, but God, nothing, it doesn't say that. Just for your information. So if you're going to share that, be careful the way you share it. Make sure you're accurate. Go, Sister Slip. Uh, uh, Father, uh, when Mary is speaking with Gabriel, she doesn't quite understand how is this possible. I've never been with a man before. But her faith is so strong because even though she herself never crossed through the Red Sea, she knew it was real. And she knew that all right. things are possible with God, That's so right. that this is also possible with God. Didn't she also... The pop, what she's saying is all possibilities are open to us. Mm -hmm. That's more the rendering. Didn't she also believe like Abraham that, yes. there, that resurrection was possible? Yes. Yeah. Yes. She was totally open for an explosive life in the spirit. Mm -hmm. I, I got this? Yeah. Is this deep? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sister Eileen, you got it? Mm -hmm. Then, uh, underline verse 27, that heavens, even the highest heaven. Now, wait, this is, this is too good. I got to march around. Yeah. Be right back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now. There you go. The highest heaven. How many levels ladies have heaven? Thank you. <laughs> Can that contain you? Now, what Solomon is saying, again, the Christmas story, Gabriel to Mary, is the highest heaven is called the Son of the Most High. <laughs> the Son of, how many ever heard that before? The Son of the Most mm -hmm. High. Now watch this. Are you all going to heaven? Yes. By God's grace. By God's grace. When we go to heaven, by God's grace. Right, is your wife going to heaven? Yes, yeah, she's definitely going. All right, now. When you go to heaven, you're going to the highest heaven. And then you'll see God as El Elyon, 
which means God again, the beyond, beyond, God beyond being God. He's God. So there's no words for it. So when we all go to heaven, we're going to central heaven, and there is the focus of everything. And Octavia's going to wear unbelievable hats that day. <laughs> <laughs> and is this the third heaven post on him? This is, yes, this is. So what happens is when we go to heaven, where did you, by the way, did you ever pray? Where does your prayer go to? El Elyon. Right. Right. Now, when you read Hebrews 4, that's because the, that's the throne of mercy. Now, look at Solomon there. Notice that, that uh, see Solomon's palace? Look at, look at on your map there. Solomon has a what? A throne room. You see where the judgment takes place? She came through the judgment throne into the throne room. Isn't it interesting that Solomon would have a throne room? Interesting, isn't it? First Kings seven again. If you want to read all of, all of the, uh, if you want to read all the particulars in it, and please please read it so you can get the background for ourselves. Okay. Good stuff. Yes. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing is too difficult. For th how do we miss this prayer our whole life, right? Okay. Next he says there. How much less this temple I have built. Now, when you're in prayer, what do you say? Nothing can contain you. Now, when you're in prayer, there's an explosion of your inner man and your inner woman. And what happens when you really pray? Nothing, Nothing can contain you. How many ever had a prayer? When I was in Louisiana once, where they say, y'all, this elevator is running on southern time, it's slow, y'all. When I was down there, I, I always liked preaching. I'm, I'm grateful on Thursday night there was a preacher up there. and I, I like preaching. I like to hear something uh, that I need to think about new and afresh. I always wanted, there were some good preachers down there. But you know what I love for the first time ever in my life? The praise and the worship was off the charts. Mm -hmm. And eight, nine, ten thousand of us were just gone. Mm -hmm. Amen. So I, when I walked out in New Orleans, I said, How you love me? How are you all doing? Then you have Mardi Gras. <laughs> we were doing Christian Mardi Gras there. Amen. We were. We are telling people to pray and everything else. It was an amazing, amazing. <laughs> now, so what happens, John chapter 2, when Jesus builds the new Hekel. <laughs> Remember he went to the table and he turned the tables over? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Destroy this temple, I will what? Build it up in three days. There's the new temple. Mm -hmm. Nothing can contain you. And so with that new temple, watch this. you, you got to get this down. With the new temple, he takes the new temple to the cross. Right. He's living in the new temple. What is Satan trying to do with the whippings of the beaten and trying to destroy the new temple already established? And guess what happens? Resurrection Sunday and the new temple explodes on the scene. So much so that in Matthew 27, 51, he invites all the dead to start walking on the fifth, a fifth annual parade in Jerusalem down the streets. Right. And all the Italians were coming out. <laughs> all the Marie's relatives were popping out. And they're going, tuta, 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 tuta. <laughs> Can't you see this? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, you know uh, do you know where the biggest Italian revival is? Barry, Italy. Oh, yeah. Have you ever been to Barry, Italy? Barry, Susan? Yes. Okay, Susan, get out of the plane, go to Barry, and go to the and you see all the time, go to the 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 Amen. Yes, yes. yes. Yet, yeah, verse 28, give attention to your servant's prayer and this plea for mercy. Now, watch this. When I say, not, number seven, when I say nothing can contain me, what do I do? He enters into, now, what's number seven? He enters into Hesed. What's it said? Mercy. mercy. It's the Hebrew word for mercy. Everybody say chesed. 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 Now, it's the power already for this. When you say the mercy of God, remember I did this once for you? This is just review. You like review? Yes. When you draw a heart in Hebrew, scooby dooby, scooby, we call that a leb, a heart. When you love, you have an ahav. That's love. But when everything starts really flowing out, it's called hesed, the mercy. Wow. So, 
We heard Jesus say today that lay down your life. So here's what he's saying to us. Build, yes, Lord. Have a hop to those interesting people who study the Bible with you. Yes, Lord. But Bill, yes, Lord. Go even deeper. Show Hesed to them. Then when you get to Hesed, the mercy message, you can then begin to lay down your life. life. Amen. You got that, Sister Ray? Yes. Is that beautiful? That's beautiful. Right, Sister Ray's going to be marching with Irma. Amen. <laughs> that's that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Sister Celeste, uh, you got that? I love that. Wow. Somebody say wow beside me. Wow. wow. So Zeb, Zeb is hard, but a hop no, is No, no, no. What is hard is Lev, L-E-B. Oh, L-E-B. I just put a little dash, Lev. L-E-B is hard. L-E-B. When you love, it's wow. a hop. Oh, so Zeb is hard. Right. Right. L-E-B. When you really work, like when L-E-B. you work in the power right. of your love, yes. out comes mercy. Right. Yes. Wow. Beautiful. That's beautiful. And then, then I said you can lay down your life for people. Right. So what happened at Calvary's cross? You understand what happened at Calvary's cross? He loved us. Yes. Sister Sister Eileen, you got it? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. That's awesome. It is. Don't go fast. This is so good. You've got to take it. All right. Everybody light your stogies. Forgive them. They know what they do. We got it. We got to meditate on this some more. Sister Celeste, you need to meditate on this some more. That's good. I like the... um. Satan. That was very good, brother. Yeah. Whipping Jesus is Satan trying to destroy the temple. The new one. Right. Right. The new one. Right. He's trying to kill him. Yeah. What's now? Because he proclaimed before he went to the cross, he was the new temple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then because of the resurrection, we're all temples of the Spirit. Amen. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> and that's why it's important on Calvary's cross, the river of the blood and the water. Yes. Okay. Sister Marie, are you getting this? Now go with me please to verse 28. Hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is praying in your presence this day. He's, now, now watch this. He's so taken up with this prayer, he's crying. Does that ring a bell? Ding, ding, ding. Who's crying? Oh, Yerushalayim, Yerushalayim. How I long to gather you little chickadees underneath my wings. Luke 19, gathering Jerusalem under the wings. What's Jesus doing? Crying. Why? What does he represent there? Jeremiah 2. What did Jeremiah do all the time? Crying. So what is Jesus doing? Crying. Now, as soon as he does that, he crosses over, and you know the story, he goes to Calvary. Now, who's crying now? the women, mm-hmm. and he says, don't cry for me. Right. For yourself mm-hmm. and for your children. He tells them not to cry. Mm-hmm. He said, get your two sons in the kingdom of God. Get your three kids in the kingdom, ma'am. He tells them to cry for themselves. Right. Yes. Yeah. For yourself and for your and children. Your children, right. Your children. Get that interesting kid in the kingdom. Right. All your parents are going, those kids of the kingdom, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Are they in? Mercy. Mercy and the grace of God, yes. Oh. We'll get there. <laughs> you got to get there, right. Amen. Next he says, here, <laughs> May your eyes be open toward this temple night and day. Now underline that. Night and day, because why? The sacrifice is going on. Now notice it starts what? Night and day. day. Night is a new day. Yes. That's right. When Jesus does miracles, for example, in Matthew 8, it says it was evening. When was the Last Supper? Evening. evening. Do you know when the Last Supper happened? It was a new day. Right. Mm-hmm. So notice, keep your eyes toward this. Now watch this. Are you getting good stuff? Mm-hmm. Yes. Just review when you pray. Remember, we're, we're doing a little primer on prayer. When you pray, you... Now, as Catholics, you're always taught to beat your breast and look down, which is a man in Luke chapter 16. But when you are redeemed sons and daughters, you, you look, look up. up to God. And then you see through God's eyes what we're going through. Mm-hmm. 
then you look up and say, look upon this temple. Because you know why? Why do you say that? Now watch this, you got to get this. Because you reside here. Watch, why, can God, why does God have to look upon me? Because he lives here. Why don't we just give you the ground plan for Solomon's temple? Because he lived there. Why did Jesus during Holy Week say in Aramaic, I'm out of here? Because God wasn't living there anymore. Because of religion. Are you getting this? So when, they, when they're saying night and day, they don't know it yet, but it's a new day. That's right. Genesis chapter 1. Miss yes. Jackie, are you hearing this? Yes. Is it deep? Yes. You think Fred got it? Yes. Thank you. All right. She thinks Fred got this. Okay. Between the two of us. <laughs> the two of us. That's a whole new day. Yeah. And that's why with Emmaus, right. it was evening, and it was another whole new day. Another new day. That's yeah. right. So that would be that's, that's terrific. So that would be weeping is for a night, where joy comes in the morning. You got it. That's it. Very good. Sister yeah. says, I salute you from Lamentations chapter 2, verse 24. <laughs> As mercy, has said, endures forever. What was that reference? Lamentations 2, 24. We're going very slow. Yeah, Sister, I hope you appreciate this. Yes. We it, 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 we, thank you. Now watch this. Now, I'm not, now, I'm going to make the most outlandish statement that the Bible makes. And Father, would that tie into uh, Psalm 23? Yea, though I walk through the valley, yes. uh, does it feel like yes. thou are with me? Their yes. rods, they stop, they come. Yes. Are you ready for this? Everybody hold your horses on this one. This is one of the most outstanding, outlandish statements that the Bible makes. It's outlandish. I would say that this is really good. This is really good. Awesome. Yeah. This is really good. Oh, are you getting this, man? Go ahead. Now, this is one of my, they're all my favorite lines all of a sudden. Yeah. Point number eight. Uh, this, this place, you said, my name shall be there. Right. Now, how do you say name in Hebrew, Sister Marie? Shem. 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 Here's the outlandish statement the Bible makes. His name is more important than his word. You and I enjoy his word every 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 day, don't we? Mm -hmm. And we say the word is equal to the Eucharist. Now, his put, name is more important. more important than his, the word. So there's your, madam. His name. <laughs> No. <laughs> She's ready to march. Now look at <laughs> Now look at your maps now. Everybody put down there. That's where God placed his name. Where's Where? And how do you say his name? Where are we putting it? Put it on the temple. That's where he placed his name. So when we say the Our Father, it says, Hallowed be thy name. It's right on the temple. Okay. And are you the temple, ma'am? Yes. It's placed on you. That's right. His name is it. Do you understand that what, what happens if you say, Good, decent Our Father? Guess what? We're married. Did you say the Our Father today, sir? We're married. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now, is this good? Yes. Now, I was talking to a Hindu last night, and picking him up my pills, ma'am. Mm. And he says, all the deities are the same. I said, no! <laughs> I said, I'm not praying with you because you're in darkness. Mm. I shouted it out in the, the <laughs> prophecy. <laughs> Uh-oh, what happened? I said, you're in darkness, and he poisoned all my pills, so I'm dead. And he says, well, God doesn't tell us his name. Wrong! Oh he says in Exodus 3.14, ma'am, sir, he tells us why H-W-H, and he places his name right on the temple. <laughs> so I smacked him silly in the 
Please don't look still looking for me. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody put it there. I want you to put lights on it. I want you to put, send your drone above it and put lights on it. Is this good? Is that great? Sisters left. Hey, my father, when he says, my name shall be there, is this the reference when Jesus says, no longer would his word be on stone, but it now be in our hearts? Yes. That's his name. In the yes. Heart. Because now, Shalomo, Solomon, Jedediah, his original name, he was, remember we did this diagram last week, all the nations had to come streaming toward it. Mm -hmm. That's right. Brother Peter. He said, verse 29, he puts his name there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I get, my, my verse says, may your eyes watch night and day over this temple, the place where you have decreed, you yeah. shall be honored. Yeah. May you, you heed the prayer which I, your servant, offer in this holy place. That's not a good translation. That's, that's what I have. Terrible translation. That's why you go with the That's what I have. My name shall be there. Yes. Yes. Now watch this. Watch my this. i I, I got to give you another cross-reference, okay? We have that. Good stuff? Mm -hmm. Brother Peter, get a new Bible. Ma'am, get a new Bible. All right, now. <laughs> Did you see that in your Bible, Miss Ellie? Yes, I see. Now watch this. The Jewish people believe, I told you many times, Ezekiel. At the end of the chapter 48, the Jewish people, at this second, there's, there's groups of them getting ready for the third temple. Third temple, amen? And by the way, they found tons and tons of coins with the Bar Kokhba revolt in the in the year 110 AD when the Jews were fighting the Romans. Wow. They found a, Lots and lots of coins. Yeah. Okay, now they saw Bar Kokhba means uh, star of the horizon, star of the... Uh, so they considered him the Messiah was there. They're finding all these things right now in our time. Now... At the end of Ezekiel, chapter 48, I told you many times, and this is when uh, the Protestants like to call upon different names of God, amen? Mm -hmm. And they, they will say, Y-H-W-H, and they'll pronounce it, but we're, we're totally not supposed to pronounce it. They say, and they'll say, Shama! Yeah. What does Shama mean? There. God? There. There. So when Brother Peter is taking the pictures when we're in Israel, I'll tell you, Brother Peter, YHWH, Shabbat. Mm. God there. So you're walking, you are going to be walking on the very grounds where the cloud came right on the spot. Take a picture. You're going to be walking right on the spot. What verse? Where, is it 48, the last verse. Chapter 48. Uh, the circumference of the city. You see the last verse of Ezekiel 48? The circumference of the city shall be 18,000 cubits. Right there. Oh. And the name of the city henceforth shall be the Lord is there. Mm. So I want you to put... Uh, wow. Uh, I, what verse is that, Sister Marie? It was 33, uh, 48, 35. 48, 35. I want you to know that it's going to happen, and that's why this is Emmanuel, and this is the city of the living God. Now you've got to get all this background, because when we, one year when we get off this study and go into the next part of the study, we're going, to go to Mount, we're, we're going into Mount Zion. Let me tell you something. When you go to Israel, you will be super prepared. Now let me tell you, when you go into Israel, I can guarantee you one thing. The guides don't know this. Mm, that's no. why we have you. Okay, you're getting this? All right, everybody see the Shema there? Yeah. Now notice the Shema. Why do they have it compared to Jeremiah 3.17? Notice the Shema there doesn't stay in Solomon's temple because it's destroyed. Right. 586 B.C. But notice, as we turn the pages through the scripture... The name's there. Notice there, if you put a little note there by Ezekiel, notice it's now permanent. Notice when you, are you all in Christ? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you love Jesus? Yes. And notice in your heart it's permanent. Right. And, and because you and I are deciding tonight, I'm not letting you go. 
Bless me, right? I am not letting you come. 18,000 cubits. Sister Marie is into her numbers again. Lord, Do you Larry. Think that reduces to 18,000. All right, now back with me to That's Kings. That's a trinity. Back with me to Kings. Everybody got this? <laughs> That's a trinity. Fine. May you, verse 29, may your eyes be open toward this temple night and day, this place of which you said, my name shall be there, so that you will hear the prayers your servant prays toward this place. Now, put a little note there, a lot of background on this one. Oh my heavens, I don't think we'll ever get off this one. When you leave town, you pray toward the Holy of Holies. Let me give you an example. I'll show you Bible, right? What did Paul do, for example? But I'll show you. We'll, we'll go to the scripture. It's so good. You got to go there. Um, even though I got so much more to say, but that's okay. When you, when Paul was on the beach, what were they doing? They were facing the part of beach, and they were facing. They were facing toward Jerusalem. All right, ready? I want you to look with me at Daniel six. You face towards the place where the action's happening. Now, what did the Jews do? Did you ever see them on El Al flight, ma'am? What were they doing? They were facing toward the temple. Did you know that when they were on the plane? And they wanted Peter to get up and join them, but Peter was uh, eating an extra snack then. <laughs> <laughs> See it right there? Yep. Right, that's how Jews pray. Everybody see Daniel 6 10. Yes. Yes. Daniel 6 10. Wow. Now what do the what does the people what do the people of Islam do? They copy that and they face toward where? Mecca. What do we do? We pray anywhere in any direction. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody with me in Daniel 6 10? Daniel 6 10. This is 6 11. 6 11. Try another verse. No. When Daniel knew that he was on the floor, the mission was 6 is verse 11. This continues because I'm going home to kneel in prayer and give thanks to the Lord in the upper chamber three times a day. Three times a day. What was he doing three times a day? He was saying the Shema. Times a day. He was saying that three times a day. Is this rich? Yes. Awesome. Sister Celestia, are you getting this? Alright, now what was he facing? Brother Peter, are you there? Uh, somebody, uh, somebody took Daniel out of Peter's Bible. Would you please put it back in? He won't be mad. Let's after Ezekiel. Let's right after Ezekiel. Sister Celestia, what do you think? He's... He's praying with certainty the way Jesus prays yes. to the Father with certainty. Yes. Yes. Do you see how powerful this prayer is? So what do we got to do? We got to pray, point number eight, we got to pray toward the power of the cross. I'm, I'm in awe of a saint called St. Martin de Porres. He's a very simple man. And everywhere he walked, people were just healed. Boom, boom. Holy Spirit was just working overtime. And you know what he did all day? He just yeah. stared at the cross. Uh -huh. There you go. Mm -hmm. Sister Brent. This is awesome. Brother Peter, did you find, did someone give you back Daniel yet? Yes, he came back. I, uh, <laughs> whoever gave, Pan, whoever gave Peter Daniel, thank you. Mm -hmm. Father Bill, not for anything. Old Testament, and he's still on his knees. Yeah. It's very yeah. unusual. It's very unusual. Yeah. Right? That's what I was thinking. All right, let's see. We've got a few minutes left. I, I, I want to finish this whole thing, but I don't think we're going to do it tonight. Verse 30 of 1 Kings uh, 8. Wait. Your servant prays toward this place. Verse 30. <laughs> Hear the supplication of your servant of your people Israel when you pray toward this place. Hear from heaven that your dwelling place 
when you hear forgive, the ninth thing is when you pray, you always got to get forgiven. What happens in the place, now, why is it important for me? There's a man going to make his confirmation, a, a beautiful man. And I said, God is especially present in the Blessed Sacrament. He says, everywhere. I said, that's true. But not like in the Blessed Sacrament. He's everywhere. And so I, I kicked him a little bit. And I said, not like he is body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. So what do I do? What do I do daily? I go to the place. I go right to the place. And I know your jobs and Route 17 stopped you from going there. But I go right to the place. Anybody have a chance to go to the place? Ma'am, do you go to the place? Mm -hmm. Ma'am, do you go to the place? Um, yes. Are you getting this? There's no other place. There's no other place. So you got to go to the place. And then at the place, the name and the what? How do you say he's there? Shama. Taken away in the book of Kings, restored in the book of Ezekiel. And by the way, just for your information, FYI again, the Jewish people believe in Ezekiel. I told you about it a hundred times, but it's, it's good for review. The Jews believe that's the third temple. So if you're ever talking to your Jewish friends, that's the third temple in Ezekiel 44 to 48. Hmm. Catholics believe that's heaven. Hmm. Just for your FYI, amen? Next he says there, verse 31. Now notice here, number 10, notice here that when we get to forgiveness, what do you got to do? Extend it. You can extend it to somebody. Did we hear the, kind of that message today? Mm -hmm. Let's look yeah. at verse 31. When anyone wrongs their neighbor and, and is required to take an oath, and they come and swear the oath before the altar in this temple, then hear from heaven and act. So what does, what does this whole temple structure set up for? It sets up for the oath now. Go all the way down on your maps, and then you can see the uh, the pillar hall and the throne of it. See it? Mm -hmm. So notice flowing out of the temple, notice going down, notice with those outer courts, that's where the judgment happened. Right. Now, when you're judged, what, are you judged in heaven or outside? Outside. 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 Hmm. Let me show you what an outer court is, Sylvester. Good stuff? Good stuff. You want to see an outer court? <coughs> Is this making sense to you? Yeah. So we are judged mm -hmm. on the outer court. Mm -hmm. Now, go with me in your Bible. This is really rich, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Go with me in your Bible to the last book in the Bible, 11, 1 and 2. Revelation, <laughs> Revelation 11, 1 and 2. The last book. Go to the, go to the end. End. Mm -hmm. Other side, other side, all the way to the end. Where are we going? Revelation. No, Revelation. 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 What I said. Revelation is what? Oh, no. Revelation is what? Chapter 11. What verse? Look at verse 1 and 2. Then I was given a measuring rod, and I was told, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar. All right, Sister Mary will read it for us, and let's see if you can make sense of this. Verse 1 and 2? Yes. Everybody with me, Revelation 1 and 2? Yes. Then I was given a measuring rod. A measuring rod. Like a staff, and I was told, Rise and measure the temple of God. The temple of God. And the altar. What's going to happen at the altar? Sacrifice. The sacrifice. And those who worship Is your sacrifice there. going to be worthy? <laughs> so what were they doing? They were where? Looking from the outer court and they were measuring the temple. But do not measure the court outside the temple. Leave that out. For it is given over to the nations and they right, will trample. Who's going who's gonna to flood in the outer court? All the nations. Cornelius was the opening today of all the nations coming. And they will trample over the holy city. They will trample. Oh, so for what's going to happen? Forty-two months. Forty-three and a half years. Three and a half years. Yes. Yeah, so there it is. So he, here comes the judgment. So does That's everybody see the outer courts? That was Jesus's. That's right. Time. That's right. You're very good. 
So does everybody see the outer courts so now? They them. Now we're going, when we're we get into, we got so many maps to give you oh. yet. So, um, so are you enjoying the ultimate Bible study with me? Yes. <laughs> I don't think we're getting too far, but anyway. Now, what do you got to do to swear an oath now? Watch this. Well, I, I'll try to go slow. When Jesus spoke the Sermon on the Mount, he said yes when you mean yes, and no when you mean no. Don't swear. And then he says, let me show you, hold your spot now. And we're wrapping up now. This is so good, isn't it? Yes. Are you ready to march around? Yes. <laughs> Go with me to Matthew 5, please. I never knew I could spend so much time on a prayer. Matthew 5? Yes. Well, this is where your um, yeah, these will be burned up. Wood, hay, or will be gold and silver. 1 Corinthians 3 11. Uh, what happened to Matthew 5? No, go to Matthew 5. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, go all the way down to verse. Ooh. Matthew 5. Yeah. Did, did, you, did you have Don't Swear? <clears throat> what verse? 33. Matthew 5, 33. Again you have heard that it was said that the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven or it is God's throne. Did, aren't we just talking about this? Yes. Notice, notice that Solomon built a what? A throne room for himself, right? Right. Now watch this. By the earth or its footstool. Look at this, verse 35. Or by Jerusalem. Hello. Wow. What's happening in Jerusalem? The temple. The temple. For wow. it is the city of the great king. Mm -hmm. Who's the great king? Who's the mega ruler? Jesus. Yes. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make... Um, even one white uh, hair, white or black, all you need to say is yes or no. Anything beyond that comes from the devil. Yes. Now, do you know you never have to say to a person, I swear to you that I mean that? Yeah. How many ever done that? Yes. Yes. Do you not swear in the Bible? Yeah. At court? So we can get out of jury duty. Yes. Well, yeah, I told you my story. <laughs> I told you my story. That a lady judge called me on the phone and says, uh, Father, can you make a statement? And I said, can't use that. I said, um, and then someone came out right next to her and said, do you swear to tell the whole truth? And I said, I don't swear. I said, I will tell you as a Christian witness my truth. She said, what? <laughs> and the judge lady just said, you can do that. Mm. Oh, she I said, said that. She yeah. said that. I said, as a Christian witness, I will tell you the truth. Mm. <coughs> because the validity of our lives is to tell you the truth. So Solomon now comes in and says, let's talk about the oath, the Shavah. Now remember I told you, biblically speaking, the oath is life and death. Say you married a woman called Jackie. You're stuck with her. <laughs> day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade. Amen. Yeah, because you made an oath in front of where? The altar. Now, let's go. Let's look at your temple for a moment. Where do they make the oath? Where the sacrifice is right going here. on, and right also there's here. some little, there's some yeah. little, the there's some little altars there. that are going inside too. So is this amazing? Wow. You sure you want to get married? Hmm. Wow. <laughs> How many would like to rethink things? If you don't, you wish you had all this information and rethink things, some things. So the oath was life or death because you did it in front of the sacrificial. I always tell my couples, I'm doing a wedding next Friday. I said, this is Calvary. You're making an oath, swearing. 
You're gonna be baby with. Does anyone ever change their mind after talking to you? <laughs> <laughs> Just a question. <laughs> well, one guy, one guy said, "Bye, Bill. Yes, my daughter kind of likes you." You scared the hell out of her. Mm. I said, that's my job. <laughs> she doesn't know now. So I, my first time with this. So now, O thing is very, very important. Don't, there, I told you the story. I know this woman. She made an oath. And years later, she says, I'm going back on my oath. Mm -hmm. I said, I warned you of that oath. Mm -hmm. I said, don't you dare. Mm -hmm. Don't you dare break your oath. I warned you, and I warned you, and I warned you. This is why... Because it goes right in front of the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And what is sacrifice? The blood. Don't do it. So when you marry Jackie, sir, do you think you knew what you were doing? A hundred percent, yes. All right. <laughs> she, she waited for the answer. Oh, oh, I that now, anyway. Flowing so from there was the power of the blood of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. When you married my Larry... Do you think you knew what you were doing? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Short and sweet and to the point. Peter, do you think you're getting married one day? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I Actually, that, where you said that woman made a oath, where did she make it? Where you, where you were that emphatic? She, she, she made it in one of the churches I was in. Mm -hmm. And I, I begged her, and I begged her, and I said, don't go there. I want to do it. I want to do what God's called me. Mm. I said, you're absolutely sure. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I said, are you absolutely sure? And when I saw her years later, I think I wanted I said, don't go there. Because she made it in front of the, the sacrifice. Mm. That's number, wow. what are we up? 10, 11? Mm. Yes, sister's life. This is why... Jephthah had to sacrifice his daughter. That's right. Because he made an oath. That's right. And there's a Christian friend of mine who says, well, I think he got it wrong. He didn't have to. Yes, he did. He made an oath, and now he had to sacrifice mm. I know, I know. Is that correct? That's Jephthah? correct. Mm. I just want to finish this back to 1 Kings 8. I did not get done with this prayer. All right, we are, we are still going on. Here. When anyone wrongs their neighbor and is required to take an oath, they come and swear the oath before your altar. So you can't wrong your how many know you can't wrong your your neighbor if you swear like that, right? Amen. Mm -hmm. Then verse thirty two, hear from heaven and act. Judge between your servants, condemning the guilty and bringing down on their heads what they have done. This is serious. And uh, vindicating the innocent by treating them in accordance with their innocence. So now do you understand Jesus' words from Matthew 5.33? A little stronger, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Back here, isn't it? But you get the context. But this is a long prayer, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Brother Peter. Well, this oath is serious business. This is, serious, this is a serious prayer. And when your people have been defeated by an enemy, verse 33, now this is... Um, this is your enemies then, uh, because you have you, they have sinned against you, and when they turn back to you and give them praise to your name, praying and making supplication to you in this temple, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel, and bring them back to the land you gave their, your fathers. Now what do you got to do, your enemies? they got to come to this place, meet you at this place, and know that you restore people. Whoa. So who are the enemies? Are they spiritual? Not necessarily. But what are you going to do? Now, let me give you this as we close. When do you want a victory in Christ? Do you want everyone want to be victorious in Christ? Yes. You've got to take the opposition against him. Take them and bring them to the foot of the cross. Say you had two feet bothering you. Say you had two ankles bothering you. Anybody have enemies? You take them and you drag them to the foot of the cross there to be dealt with. Are you getting this? So you take your enemy because your enemy can't win against the power of this place. Now remember I told you many times, how do you say place in Hebrew? M-A-Q-O-M. M-A-Q-O-M. M -A -Q -O -M. Now when you say place, I want you to substitute it for the rest of your life 
name. Mm. When I say this place, what are you going to say? This the name. name. Mm. I told you the true story of a man that I greatly admire. He wrote one of my favorite songs. Mm. Majesty, worship his majesty. Jesus who died now. His name is Jack Hayford. Jack what? Hayford. He was going through the towns and he was praying over all the churches for a revival. He comes to a Catholic church and he says, are they Christians? Can I pray for them? He got a word from the Holy Spirit that day. He said, of course. That's where I share my body and blood, soul and divinity every day. Amen. Wow. Now this is a Protestant minister. He was blown off of his car seat. That's what God said to him. Did he become a Catholic? No. Oh well then. <laughs> Majesty. I still love that song. Mm -hmm. We will pick up there with the most exciting part, whatever part we're on. This, this is really exciting. Amen. Now next week I want to start sharing this, the second temple as we get geared up for that. We're going to be walking with Jesus like you never walked with him. We're going to be visiting spots that he stopped along the way in Jerusalem. Yes, you're going to be seeing everything like you've never seen it before. So when I take you to Jerusalem, ma'am, you are going to say, Peter is, you're going to say Peter missed a lot of times he was here. Should I put Peter on the second bus with you, ma'am? Oh, but you, Peter, you can be going to join these two women next week. Good stuff? Good stuff. Bring my rocky stick. Is this very good stuff? It's in the key. It's awesome. Okay, you, you filled out another sheet there. Um, hopefully, I, did everybody get the sheet? Which one? No, the sheets I gave you. The temple. Oh, the map. The map. Yeah, the sheet. Oh. <laughs> I, I was going to draw it, but uh, beautifully, no, this is great. Beautifully, <laughs> I found. Extra. 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 Oh, Larry, she needs to be wrapped up, put ice on everything, her legs. Do I place her in your car? <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Place, place her in your car. <laughs> her favorite Italian expression is, stop the Jeep. <laughs> in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all God's people say. Amen. Father, we thank you for the temple experience. We thank you that we can see things like we've never seen before from the Abrahamic to the Davidic to Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Thank you for the background. Thank you for the insights. May we have love in our hearts to continuously share them with all people around us. Wow, what a night. Wow, what a Savior. Wow, what a teaching you have given us. Glory to Father. And to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, and to the beginning, now and shall be world without end. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I want to put this in a book. What do you think? Yes. Yeah, yeah you always say that.